the narrative now that it's up to the tech monopolies to determine what is appropriate censorship is completely ridiculous. Now you're actually seeing this as a barrier to entry. You're actually seeing this as a moat. You are somewhat impenetrable from private competition or for really kind of markets to run the course, their natural course, and have competition figure out who the winners and losers are. The leading content social media platform companies that have market caps, Twitter, you know, what, 35 billion, they're able to spend an obscene amount of money on content censorship. They'll call it kind of trust and safety. Um, now, it re- the better label for it really is content censorship, um, i.e. fascism, content information war. What's interesting here, though, is that I found this article in the Financial Times, and it's actually from back in you know, 2017. The article is called, Facebook Counts the Costs of Post-Truth Politics. Basically, it's Zuckerberg saying, we're going to hire tens of thousands of people to put all the regulation and, and all the things in place. And this is what happened to the stock price, right? You actually saw Twitter stock um, going down, mm-hmm. Google uh, and Facebook unabated. And, and that's actually similar to what we're seeing today, where you see Twitter's censorship, um, which, I mean, relatively, they're way more overly aggressive. But you see this similar thing, right? This really shows you the dichotomy between really having that monopoly status where you are somewhat impenetrable um, or invincible from private competition or for really kind of markets to run the course, their natural course, and have competition, you know, figure out who the winners and losers are, right? When you have this disconnect, right, in terms of the monopolies can can take these actions with little to no concern about any retribution or any fallout. This was actually the first time that I think the executives at Facebook and Google saw this, right? They said, we're going to have to spend, we're going to have to hire tens of thousands of people. Zuckerberg promised to invest so much in security that it would significantly impact our profitability. Facebook plans to hire or contract 10,000 extra staff, doubling the number of people working on safety and security. They're doubling and invest in technologies to better spot bots and posts from malicious sources. This is an analyst. It said it was hard not to model a decline in valuation. The exact opposite happened. Stock went up. Why did the stock go up? Because Mr. Weiser is saying, well, you know, they got to hire 10,000 people and that could cost a billion dollars. Even if they're outsourced to countries like the Philippines. And what ended up happening is now you're actually seeing this as a barrier to entry. You're actually seeing this as a moat um, around the tech monopolies here. Where now they're saying, well, if this is 2017, Facebook already had 5,000 people working. Then, then Zuckerberg said, we're, we're, we're going to go hire another 10,000. Okay, now you're at 15. You don't think they've added to that number in the past three years? Uh, I bet there are over 20,000 people doing some form of content censorship, you know, trust and safety. Here is uh, you know, their operating costs. But this, you know, these numbers are now going even higher. This is just through 2016. This is really before, you know, these kind of uh, memos came out from Zuckerberg and, and, and the likes that we're going to have to spend billions and billions of dollars on all of this. So now what's happening is the expectation that big tech is trying to co opt with the media is that if you don't have, you know, at least hundreds of people doing content censorship. You're a, you're a, you know, extremist, um, you know, a little watering hole harboring terrorists and all this malicious activity. And uh, sorry, gang, it's just not true. You don't need to spend hundreds of millions of dollars, even tens of millions of dollars to have a viable, uh, legal <clears throat> content platform or social media business. 
these companies, which are spending, these companies being Facebook, Facebook, uh, Google, Amazon, Apple, but in a little bit different way, um, and Twitter, have now viewed this as a competitive advantage because they've got, Facebook's got over 20,000 people. They're spending billions of dollars a year on trust and safety. We just talked about Telegram on the last episode. Telegram saying, I got over $200 million in server costs. They don't charge. They don't actually make any real revenue. Um, and they're just trying to do a fundraise to keep the servers on, to literally keep the lights on. <clears throat> now you say, hey, Telegram, which has over 500 million users, which, which signed up, I think, 30 million users in seven days. I mean, it's insane. The exodus to these alternative content, social media communication platforms, and it's only going to continue <clears throat> because these, these tech monopolies have violated they have violated the ethos of platforms. And there's no walking that back. Uh, they've opened Pandora's box. We've seen their true colors for months and quarters and actually years here. We've been covering it on the show. But I think now a lot of people have really woken up that it's untenable and unacceptable. And that's why you see this uh, diaspora away from <clears throat> these uh, entrenched tech monopolies. And now this is where it comes back to private competition, right? Where can private competition uh, level the playing field? When the market responds, when the, when the users say, this is not okay, I'm going to leave. Can private markets uh, you, you know, enable that to happen? And what you've seen instead is now you've seen, actually, you've actually seen the tech monopolies band together to help each other. Where is the DOJ on the antitrust on this? We've actually already seen, we covered it on the show called Project Jedi, where Google and Facebook literally have written agreements uh, to, to help each other to form a digital advertising duopoly and to keep the competition out of the digital advertising spectrum. Actually documented that they're working together. Before all of this, right? Before... Parler gets kicked off of AWS because Parler isn't spending millions of dollars on sufficient content censorship. And then they're branded an extremist social media platform and boom, their apps are removed from Apple and Google. Amazon takes down their servers. This is the narrative. And these companies are small. So how are you supposed to compete when now they, now they say, well, you know, you're not doing sufficient censorship. There's no law around this. Who makes up the expectation about what is suffi sufficient censorship, if not the laws? The narrative now that it's up to the tech monopolies to determine what is appropriate censorship, <laughs> if they're going to allow your app to be on the app store, or if they're going to allow their servers to power your business, is completely ridiculous. Because these guys are spending billions of dollars on it. They had over 20,000 employees. You don't think they have a bias? They love the censorship. They see it as a competitive advantage. No one's seeing that this is completely inappropriate and they shouldn't be making the rules. There's clear precedent for laws. For is the FBI launching an investigation? Is your business uh, not complying with U.S. law, not taking down information? Um, that is clearly violating, you know, U.S. law. And now it's just kind of been, boom, co-opted uh, <clears throat> into uh, what, you know, they think is appropriate levels of censorship. And you're not able to have true private competition. You're not able to let the markets work themselves out when you have the tech monopolies teaming up with each other to gang up on the smaller competition. It's actually genius by the tech monopolies here. And they've now whipped up the media into it. They've made it a partisan issue, but we got to take a step back and not get dragged into this. This is how you stamp out competition. This is how you stamp out letting the markets speak for themselves when, when you get the tech monopolies teaming up with each other and just arbitrarily deciding what's appropriate levels of censorship. I mean, it's, it's frankly laughable but not many people are really talking about it or they're too scared to talk about it or it's inappropriate to talk about it, but it's absolutely ridiculous. People can see what's going on. They're not happy with it. They're not okay with it. They're trying to leave the grasp of the tech monopolies, 
but now they're being, you know, uh, um, met with resistance at every step of the way. That's not how the markets are supposed to work. Hi, this is Alex from Winner Take All. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to leave a comment, ask us questions, and definitely make sure to join us on our next live stream.